Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Priya Sarbaha. My topic for today is difference between wrongful restraint and wrongful confinement. Let's start with wrongful restraint. The term wrongful restraint denotes a willful obstruction of any individual in order to keep that individual from proceeding towards any path in which that individual has a privilege to continue. According to Section 339 of IPC, whoever voluntarily obstructs any person so as to prevent that person from proceeding in any direction in which that person has a right to proceed is said wrongfully to restrain that person. It has cert certain exceptions also, like the obstruction of a private way over land or water which a person in good faith believes himself to have a lawful right to obstruct is not as an offense within the meaning of this section. Let's understand wrongful restraint in a very simple manner. For example, this is a college premises and this is the entrance. Students want to come to the college for study, which is their basic right. Some of the anti-social elements are also standing on the entrance of the college and they are restraining, wrongfully restraining the students to enter into the college. Although the other path, this is also a path and these are also a space which is around the college that is free. They are only restraining students to enter into the college, but the other paths are open for them. So it is considered that, that the students are being wrongfully restrained by the antisocial elements to do something which is their legal right that is to study so that is called wrongful restraint that means it is only for the specific area where the person is having a right to enter but it is restrained and wrongfully restrained by some other person but at the same time other areas are open to move that is called wrongful restraint. Punishment of wrongful restraint has been defined under section 341 of IPC, which says that whoever wrongfully restrains any person shall be punished with simple imprisonment for a term which may extend to one month or with fine which may extend to 500 rupees or with both. So the classification of offence are first is punishment that means a simple imprisonment for one month or fine or both. Second is bailable. Here the meaning of bailable is if an offence is bailable, police has the authority to release the accused on bail on getting the defined surety amount along with the duly filed bail bond at the concerned police station. Otherwise, arrested person has to apply for bail before a magistrate or court. Secondly, it is a cognizable offence and tribal by any magistrate. That means if an offence is cognizable, police has the authority to arrest the accused without a warrant and to start an investigation with or without the permission of a court. Otherwise, police does not have the authority to arrest the accused without a warrant and an investigation cannot be initiated without a court order. And lastly, this is a compoundable offence by the person restrained. Here the compoundable means a compromise can be done between the accused and the victim and a trial can be avoided. Otherwise, no compromise is allowed between the accused and the victim except under certain situation where the High Court or Supreme Court have the authority for quashing a matter. Next is wrongful confinement. The term wrongful confinement has been explained under Section 340 of IPC, which lays down that whoever wrongfully restrains any person in such a manner as to prevent that person from proceeding beyond certain circumscribing limits said wrongfully to confine that person. For example, if A causes Z to go within a wall space and lock Z in, A thus prevented 
from proceeding in any direction beyond the circumscribing line of wall. A wrongfully confined Z. We can easily understand with a very simple diagram that this is a room and Z has been confined by A in this room. There is no other way out to get out from the room. So that is why Z has been wrongfully confined by A because there is no other way out. Whereas in wrongful restraint, if there is an another way out, then it can be said that it is wrongful restraint. But here there is no way out. So that's why it is called as wrongful confinement. Punishment of wrongful confinement is explained under section 342 to 348 of IPC. According to section 342, whoever wrongfully confines any person shall be punished with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to one year or with fine which may extend to 1000 rupees or with both. That means the classifications of offenses are the punishment which should be the imprisonment for one year or fine of 1000 rupees or both. Then cognizable, this is a cognizable offense and can be triable by any magistrate. Then it is bailable and compoundable by the person restrained or confined. I have already explained the meaning of cognizable, bailable and compoundable. The second category of wrongful confinement is wrongful confinement for three or more days. According to section 343, whoever wrongfully confines any person for three days or more shall be punished with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to two years or with fine or with both. So that means the classification are punishment that is imprisoned for two years, fine, or both then again this is also cognizable and can be triable by any magistrate third it is bailable and fourth it is compoundable by the person confined with the permission of the court the third category is wrongful confinement for 10 or more days according to section 344 whoever wrongfully confines any person for 10 days or more shall be punished with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to three years and shall also be liable to fine. That means the punishment is imprisonment of three years and fine. Then it is cognizable and triable by any magistrate. This is also bailable and the compoundable by the person confined with the permission of court. Fourth one is wrongful confinement of person for whose liberation writ has been issued. That means according to section 345, whoever keeps any person in wrongful confinement, knowing that a writ for a liberation of that person has been duly issued, shall be punished with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to two years in addition to any term of imprisonment to which he may be liable under any other section of this chapter. So the classification are first is punishment that is imprisonment for two years in addition to imprisonment under any other section. Secondly, it is a cognizable and triable by any magistrate. Thirdly, it is bailable and fourthly, it is non-compoundable. Fifth one is wrongful confinement in secret. According to section 346, whoever wrongfully confines any person in such manner as to indicate an intention that the confinement of such person may not be known to any other person interested in the person so confined or to any public servant or that a place of such confinement may not be known to or discovered by any such person or public servant as herein before mentioned shall be punished with imprisonment of either descript description for a term which may extend to two years in addition 
to any other punishment to which he may be liable for such wrongful confinement. So the classification of offense is first punishment that is imprisonment for two years in addition to imprisonment under any other section. Secondly, this is also cognizable and triable by any magistrate. Thirdly, it is bailable. And fourth, this is also compoundable by the person confined with the permission of the court. Sixth one is a wrongful confinement to extort property or constraint to illegal act. This is mentioned under section 347. It explains that whoever wrongfully confines any person for the purpose of extorting from the person confined or from any person interested in the person confined any property or valuable security or of constraining the person confined or any person interested in such person to do any illegal or to give any information which may facilitate the commission of an offense shall be punished with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to three years and shall also be liable to fine. So the classification is imprisonment for three years and fine. Secondly, cognizable and triable by any magistrate. Thirdly, it is bailable. And fourth, it is non-compoundable. The seventh one is wrongful confinement to extort confession or compel restoration of property. This has been described under section 348 of IPC, which explains that whoever wrongfully confines any, purpose, any person for the purpose of extorting from the person confined or any person interested in the person confined any confession or any information which may lead to detection of an offense or misconduct or for the purpose of constraining the person confined or any person interested in the person confined to restore or to cause the restoration of any property or valuable security or to satisfy any claim or demand or to give information which may lead to the restoration of any property or valuable security shall be punished with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to three years and shall also be liable to fine. So the classification are imprisonment for three years and fine then it is cognizable and tribal by any magistrate this is also bailable and non-compoundable a quick revision of the difference between the wrongful restraint and wrongful confinement first in wrongful restraint a person is restrained from proceeding in some particular direction though free to proceed elsewhere. Whereas in wrongful confinement, a person is restrained from proceeding in any direction beyond a certain area. Second, wrongful restraint is genus, but wrongful confinement is a species of wrongful restraint. Third is, wrongful restraint is an offense which prevents a person from proceeding in direction in which that person has a right to proceed. Whereas in wrongful confinement, this in this offense, which keeps a person within certain circumscribing limit, the person wrongfully confined cannot go out of circumscribing limit, even if he wishes to go. Fourth, in wrongful restraint, there is only a partial suspension of one's liberty. Whereas in wrongful confinement, the restraint is total or absolute. Fifth is wrongful restraint is not a serious offense and is punishable with lesser punishment. Whereas wrongful confinement is more serious offense and is punishable with severe punishment than in wrongful restraint. The last one is punishment for wrongful restraint is imprisonment to one month or fine of rupees 500 or with both. 
where is in wrongful confinement the punishment is imprisonment of one year which may extend to three years on the duration of confinement or fine of rupees 1000 or with both so that's all about the distinction between wrongful restraint and wrongful confinement if you want the detailed notes you may visit to my website that is priyasapaha.com Hope you like the video and if you like it, don't forget to subscribe my channel. So see you next. Bye-bye.